Hi everyone. Today I will be sharing with you a history of brass instruments from conch shell to the modern trumpet and the novel inventions that were created along the way to continually enhance each design. The brass family of the modern band ensemble consists of a variety of instruments, including the trumpet, horn, trombone, tuba, and some other oddballs. These instruments are full of mechanical engineering that allow them to play almost anything you can imagine. They are very common nowadays too, widely known and found in developed countries all across the world. But the ancestors of these instruments go back a very long way. Before getting into the history of how brass instruments originated, let's be clear on what a brass instrument actually is. A brass instrument is defined by the production of sound through the buzzing of the player's lips, as you can see from this attractive picture. It doesn't mean that the instrument is necessarily made of brass, since instruments that are made of other metals, wood, horn, or even animal bone are included in the family of brass instruments. Likewise, other instruments that are made of brass or metal, such as the flute or saxophone, are not in the brass family because they make sound using the vibrations of other things than the lips, such as a reed. The conch shell is the most likely candidate for the first brass instrument. The inside of a conch shell is actually a hollow tunnel that wraps around and around until it comes out of the end. If you bust the tip off, you get a place to buzz into and an instrument has been created. This instrument is the ram's horn, also called the shofar. It was used by shepherds and people for signaling a long time ago. Today, you may notice that the term horn is used when referring broadly to most instruments. That likely stems from this. But these instruments really only give you one note. So how do you get more notes? The cornet solved this problem by borrowing a technique from a flute. By drilling holes in your tubing, each hole you cover up adds a bit of length to your pipe. The tone quality leaves a little to be desired, but some more notes are added. The other way brass instruments change notes is through altering of the firmness of your lips. This is a post horn. It was used to signal the arrival of important travelers, nobles, or kings and queens in the early ages. The ancient Olympic games in Greece included contests of trumpet playing in 396 BC. These contests were judged not by musicality, but by volume of sound. You can get two or three notes by changing your lips because the instrument was long enough. A general rule, the longer the pipe, the more notes you can get. But it's very cumbersome because of the length. So, they coiled it. It's still long, so you get a handful of notes, but much more manageable and easier to carry. This led to the development of the bugle, used in the military for signaling the daily routines of camp, such as wake up with reveille, eating time, and bedtime. They were also used to relay instructions from officers to soldiers in battle. But still, we are far from chromatic notes or being able to play any sort of song. The first way this problem was solved was with an instrument closely resembling the modern trombone, the sackbut, in the 15th century. While possessing a funny name in our modern age, the name came from the French words for push and pull. By manipulating the slide to add or subtract from the overall length of tubing, this instrument became the first to be fully chromatic, able to play virtually any note. Why they didn't stop there beats me. It seems like you can't really get better than the slide in a name like the sack butt. Another inventive way to add notes is with the addition of keys. Keyed bugle gave access to a few more notes, but because the sound escaped out of the holes and not the bell, they sounded non-optimal. It was also a very complicated and expensive design. In 1815, the first valve was invented by Heinrich Stotzel. The valve is the primary method of note changing today. By pressing a valve, a length of tubing is added to the airflow. This allowed instruments to be fully chromatic and still direct all of their air out of the bell for maximum sound and tone. With a long history of innovations dating back thousands of years, brass instruments are truly an art in themselves. I hope you'll continue the tradition by learning to play one for yourself. Thank you for listening. Stay brassy, everyone. Here are my sources for all the pictures used in the research I did for this presentation.